Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming. I'm Dell and this is From the Depths and we are in the designer as this is the second part of looking at what's coming up in development and the new fuel based engines. Um, now first of all before I start this version I am running is the dev test build 1.8656 Two, I think it is. There's too many, too many eights and too many sixes in there somewhere. But um, uh, basically, this might not be live at the time and in stable when you're watching this. But uh, hopefully soon. Um, check the comments for the exact build number. I'll I'll put it into the comments. So when you start up, it says in the top left-hand corner or, or at the top of the GUI as to what build number you're in. So if you don't see all of these parts and this um, in yours. It may be you're running in the previous build. Also, this is a again dev, dev development, so everything here is subject to change. It is possible some of the things I will show you will react differently when it goes live onto the stable build. But uh, this is a preview of what's coming up. So in this episode I would like to or I'm intending to look at a few design concepts of different engines and what you can do with your designs and what you may need to build. Now again there's um, these are not ultimate engine designs these are just some that I came up with just to show possibilities and where people may be thinking of uh, building and, and what is possible You'll certainly get some engines which are smaller, larger, or even more complex, but this is just a, a quick look through on some of them. Right, so we'll start off by going over to this little basic engine here. And this will be our starting point for working out what is good and bad in, um, in this build um, and in this, is this design. So this is a... Um, based upon something which is extendable, so it's a single cylinder. Now, um, if you've read the previous build, um, sorry, episode, you know that um, the power of the engine is based upon the power from a single cylinder and then duplicating that on multiple cylinders, not um, some uh, algorithm that works based upon the number of... Um, cylinders w regardless of what else is put onto the system so every cylinder is cumulative to the total from the engine so here we have a single cylinder engine which is giving out 400 power and i've designed it yes i could put things on the end but i've designed it so that um let me just slow down this this down by going into build mode that's a little bit better um i've designed it so you could put this into a, a um a two block um wide configuration to do it as a prefab so that's the idea so you could just continue with these two blocks put continue on building it with a roughly 400 per cylinder as a basic design and um, yeah it's got some superchargers and a turbocharger uh, now I've not put any cooling on this yet because that's something I'm going to look at first because I was looking at the um, the basic designs and I thought it would be nice to know what an engine is capable of doing without cooling first and then we're going to cool it to ensure that it gets to its maximum potential because um, what we can look at is is it better to have a, 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 a cool running engine with a very little cool extra cooling required or get something hot and try and cool the, the damn thing down so that it works at its maximum effect so anyway starting off what we're going to look at is this one engine and if we look at the efficiencies of this engine if I normalize it um, you'll notice that this engine generally on this line what this means is that it's fuel efficient at the lower rpm ranges and higher rpms less efficient now to work out if you want some numbers um, these numbers here in the fuel use at the various efficiencies you need to divide them into the power ratio at each level because as your engine efficiency moves up, i.e. the amount of power you get out of your engine, you'll want to rework it back to how much power 
power per unit of fuel you're going to get. So in this example, at the 100% um, uh, power use, you're going to be using um, one fuel per 90 um, power units. So one in so 90 units, uh, so 90 power per unit of fuel. Um, at the 50% mark, you're going to be getting about 119 for every unit of fuel, and at the lower end, 160 for every uh, unit of fuel. Obviously, you're not actually going to be getting 160, because uh, you're only going to be running at 40, but um, it, it's a way to classify um, how much fuel, or how much power you're getting for each fuel unit. So that's the way I have estimated these power levels uh, myself just to get an idea of of visualization should we say because the normalization line is okay but it's it they all look very similar so th this is a good in a reasonable engine i think as a starting point um to give power now just to show what it's like though we're going to make sure we've got some power required and then we'll turn turn it on so we'll give it full beans and you'll notice now um, when we go in here the demand has gone up there we go to a hundred percent and you can see we're over running this quite significantly straight away so what we we'll do is we we'll just find out what percentage this will really run at without cooling so we'll just let it cool down There we go, we've started up. Now what we can do is just move the maximum drive up until we get to a point where we're producing power but not increasing temperature. Uh, that seemed to be so a little bit higher than that, maybe 60%. Now one thing you can see is obviously the maximum power is going down or the power yield because of the, of the temperature so you know we don't want to be at these higher temperatures in general we want to be at a lower temperature and we can see the actual rate around the 50 percent 40 50 percent is a good temperature to get a good power ratio we're at 390 going down a little bit at 40 so but we could push this up to let's try 70 about 75 percent see if that if that overcook cooks it yeah, i think that's gonna overcook it maybe yep that overcooked it so we're not gonna get full power out of this unit um on that temperature so you definitely need cooling it's not an what i call a naturally cooled engine um, but it's quite efficient as such um, in that if you elongated this you'd get quite a good bit of power out of this now as far as cooling goes to keep the cooling going let's just um, add an engine radiator and we'll see how many we need to keep this going so now I'm just going to put this at 100% now I'm expecting that to cut out almost straight away so we're up to a hundred percent that cut down it's a bit high we don't really want that high let's see three per cylinder that seems to be about a good rate that's keeping that within a reasonable temperature obviously we've got dips which is potentially what you'd get anyway which it allows it to cool down now we can make it stick on that temperature even when it uh, goes down there we go just by increasing the decay so okay we've got a good possibly three blocks now it's pushed that temperature because of the temperature that maximum power efficiency is a bit low there so the two choices you have is say okay don't go as as high 
if we want to get around 60%, and this is, I'm sure someone will come, you see that's, that's dramatically increased just by going down to 90, getting closer to the 60 degree. Now I can do that, or I could put, say, let's put another radiator in there. Yeah, 60%, we've got a good 357. I think that's a 60% seems to be a good cylinder temperature. Okay, the main bit we're looking at here is, um, after no, it's a bit meaningless just watching that, is you need four radiator blocks, four meters of radiator, um, so we're going to use the same basis on all of them is uh, how much to have it at its ideal level which on this we're going to say is 60% uh, sorry 90% 90, 90%, uh, of maximum drive and 60% heat we need 4 to 1 roughly ok so that's, that's a a basic engine so we now know how much sort of cooling we're going to need per cylinder and that's quite a lot of cooling if if you were to extend that out to a big engine you're going to need quite a few radiators um, to keep this this engine cool okay we'll go up to a a slightly uh, different design we'll go up to this elongated engine now this is a fairly simple engine as you can see it is just um, a single cylinder just replicated one long it's not as complex as that one it is fairly simple it's got a turbocharger on one side and superchargers on the other there's no fuel injection on this one so this is totally carbureted carbureted and we've got 2000 power units out of 10 cylinders so basically it's 200 per cylinder and 10 cylinders so yeah good little 200 power so let's just push this up to its maximum and then we can see on the normalization chart and looking at this um, the efficiencies I'll cut this down to zero again suddenly just for a bit we can see that the low use efficiency 17 mid 5.5 and then 0.68 now the what that equates to is at high we've got a power to fuel of 112 which is a much better than the single cylinder design we were using before before uh, where it was 90 this is now 112 so that's, that's quite good at the medium 50 percent usage this 5.5 we're actually getting 178 power whereas with the previous version it was 119 so this is a very efficient around the the 50 percent mark which is possibly where you'd want to run this as a very efficient engine and then finally we've got the low power usage which means running at idle so when we're running very idly at the 10 percent or somewhere around that we've got 294 units of power per fuel but obviously at this sort of level we're not going to be generating very much fuel so let's now turn this up see what it, it will uh, deal out now we're not generating enough energy here so let me just go and start another shield just to generate a little bit more power requirement um, what we'll do is we will put that one on there that should generate yep that's definitely generating a, a larger power requirement so it's going up to 100% now now you can see because we're not getting any dips now there's going to be constant power requirement the maximum power is going down but the temperature this is a, st a temperature stable engine it's keeping the temperature we actually don't need any cooling on this engine um, 
for the number of cylinders, so this is a, a you know, effectively it's passively cooled, even at 100% usage, we're running with, you know, no actual requirement for any cooling. Obviously it would be nice to get some cooling just to uh, reduce the the heat and increase the power. So, but we know, let's say we wanted to use this as an, a very efficient engine, you'd pull this down to say uh, about the say 60, somewhere between there, let's say around 60, yeah 65 percent. So that's going to be a stable point, that's the maximum, and it would just stay there. We can see immediately the power's almost back up to its 2000. And that's going to be a very fuel efficient engine at that level. So this is a very basic design. Um, and what I'm suggesting with this here is that with... You, you could use this as a, as a fairly simple design. It takes up a lot of space, a lot of length. But it's a very simple design with very little extras required that could replace, also because of the size, it replaces a lot of standard sort of engines with this particular design. And it's also very easy to put into a prefab, to just build the engine. Unfortunately though, it's not very powerful for its length, certainly, but it's a good starting point uh, to run. You can see here, we're down to 37%, so that's um, on our temperature. Uh, which is excellent, and we haven't even put any cooling on this yet, so we're we're running. We could even let's go this a little higher. As as we uh, as I said on the uh, settings, it's also very efficient. The 112, even running at maximum, uh, 112 per one unit, isn't bad at all. If we get up to that 60% heat, which seems to be a we're at 1930. Still fairly low on the heat, 85%. So we're much further than we were with a single engine, as far as heat go, as uh, our maximum potential level. About this 85, we might be able to pick it up a little bit further. Eighty-seven percent. Okay, so a good economical design, although a little big in reality. But the primary one is no cooling required. Um, if we do put it up to a hundred percent, let's just see for ten how much cooling it's going to require. Right, we'll put. Um, let's see how many should we have. Let's ha let's have five there. And just five, so that's half a meter per cylinder, and we're below the 60%, and so that's a very low cooling requirement to keep this well below um, a 50%. That's, that's making it very efficient. You can see the temperature's gone up there. Um, if we do go to it, well, if we go to one per cylinder. You can see the temperature's gone up for those extra blocks because of the lowering of the temperature. So, yep, good little design. Now, we just turn that one off for a moment. So that's my efficient engine. Um, not necessarily very large. It's not hyper efficient. It's it's good at very efficient at lower. Well, it's good at all through the rev range but especially at idle. Idle is very good. Um, so you could use this as your standard starting point engine, um, which, you know, ramps up very quickly, which, as I've set here, and doesn't turn off. It, it's, it provides the max, most of your power if you have space in your uh, ship. Okay, some other unusual designs then. Um, Another design I quite like is because we can do these cylinders on all sides of the crankshaft, you can have a like a, a rotary style of engine. So here we have a rotary engine. Now this is um, again 2000 out, um, power output. So it's the same output as the 
long engine here but as you can see significantly shorter but much larger um, radius of the engine now uh, the the exhausts here um, could be redone uh, this one doesn't have any exhaust I've even cut out the exhausts because it didn't need them and also they got the because uh, of the way the turbochargers are we couldn't get an exit on this one I have done the full exhaust it's got basically um, if we look at here um, we've got 12 superchargers and eight turbochargers uh, on four cylinders so that's basically three superchargers and two turbos for each cylinder it's basically based on a three width block so you could again make it a prefab and just create start creating them and just join it just needs to be joined at the exhaust port here that'd be the only change you need to make but you could continue making this off so that's 2000 so this is basically 500 per cylinder efficiency wise um not bad it, it's it's not good at high if we just put the normalize here it's fairly level um in the normalization I, it's i don't know how they work this normalization out but i don't work it out as level when i look at the figures um at 100 percent the the usage is 86 to 1 and that to me means it's not very efficient that's worse than the single cylinder at high power levels the 50 percent usage is 104 which is actually not bad it's it's close to the single cylinder um, not as good as the inline but the inline is obviously a very efficient engine and 126 so at the lowest level which again is not very good so this is not a very economical engine but we're getting 2000 so that's 500 per cylinder so um, and it's relatively space efficient um, good if you wanted to have a, a particular design where where you've got possibly plenty of width and height um, rather than length um, it also is good for producing power fairly quickly now if we just a, a downside of it if we give it the full power we can see yeah that's overheated almost straight away I don't think we're even going to get yet yeah, overheated straight away. We'll give it 50% power just when it starts up, just to see how quickly it heats up again. So this needs some cooling. So that would be the bad point about this. Let's let it heat up. Let's see what ratio we get to before it overheats. Get the temperature up a bit. And start bringing it down 80%. I think that's going to be too high. Yeah, I need to come down. We were trying to stay at around the 60% mark. So 75 is 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 roughly a maximum we're looking at at 90%. So not very good. I think we were getting a lot higher than that with the uh, other engine. Uh, so let's look at some cooling now. What do we need? to have this running say at 90% with some cooling so allowing one per cylinder so that's four because this would be an engine you'd have you'd want to use to get plenty of power that's its its primary you're not worried too much about the fuel usage I don't think you're going to be going for power so I'm going to put it at 100% and okay now that's not enough we're overheating then I overheat there let's put another row of four on so that's uh, two to one now here we had four to one so here we're looking at two to one we're not near the 60%. Let's see if we can get that down. You can see that temperature's already down there. Go to the 4 to 1, which is the same as we had with the single cylinder engine. Not bad, considering we're running at 100%, but that's very low. We need to get that temperature down a bit more. So it's a 5 to 1. 
but we're giving a good power output here good 1700 power yeah let's go six to one then we're really we're, we're, we've got pedal to the metal here 62 percent uh, that's not bad then but you can see the fuel usage definitely not not great on this particular engine because of the heat the uh, fuel usage has gone up as well so it's actually higher we'd need a bit more so we're up to one two three we're up to six let's go to seven to one now uh, bringing me below that 1600 that's helped a lot with the temperature but let's just bring this down let's just bring this down from the maximum down to say 95 percent Ah, that's, that's jumped up. You can see the that maximum power possible has jumped up. So possibly our actual output is actually better now. So, okay. A lot of cooling required, as you can see, when you start to try and push the power output out of this uh, above the 500... Um, per cylinder you can see the amount of cooling and that that's, takes up a lot of space in your potentially in your vessel so okay we'll just take that power down now which is what we're looking at okay what other designs have we got so this is a rotary with um, plenty of turbos and superchargers more superchargers than turbochargers so it had a fairly flat let's say we want something which is more um, designed for higher revs so this is a design um, it's a boxer so we got tw the cylinders are either side and then there's a gap of two between them and then there's another pair uh, so we've got four cylinders and it's giving out 2,000 horsepower so uh, 2000 power so that's again 500 to 1 uh, the difference on this now it's a little difficult to see it says eight superchargers and four turbos but actually each cylinder if I go and find the cylinder is actually connected to six um, uh, let me just get to the right point let's uh, find the right one there we go six turbochargers are connected to this um, cylinder let me just check this other cylinder the other side yep six six turbos so because I've used in this is a lot of inline turbos you can see the um, the pipe work is a plumber's nightmare here to get all of the um, pipe work to go through each of the turbos in turn um, so it was a bit, bit <laughs> difficult to work out, and because at the moment the turbos they don't have a good mirroring version, uh, it's not totally 100% symmetrical. So that's why it's a little bit awkward uh, to build on this one. But it's all turbos, uh, which is great for high-end efficiency. So if we look at the actual stats, we've got 100% usage is 17.6 so that's 113 which is the same as the the inline 10 so at high revs this is giving out um, you know similar sort of levels of consumption uh, which is a bit you know uh, I've got to say I would have expected more because this needs no cooling and is a lot smaller and this gives out better power than this one yeah um so why would you want anything except this build if you've got the space and look at the amount of space this takes up so hopefully i'm um, hoping these turbos might get a little bit of a buff in the future because the difference between this design at high level and this design which only has one turbocharger is just a, a, a factor of one not a factor but uh, the uh, other one was 112 and this is 113. Um, other areas, the mid-range at 8 is 125, so that's not very good um, in comparison. And the 137 for the 
lowest level. So all in all, apart from high level, everything else is worse on this. So you'd want this running at maximum speed only. Um, it does take up a little bit less length, but with all that pipe work, it looks great. But yeah, doesn't really have the required effect. So let's just give this a maximum drive and see how quickly it overheats. Now I've set this to have a slow ramp up. But actually, I'm just change that to a really quick ramp up and have a, a low decay. So once it's going fast, it just stays running fast. Come on. There we go. I was wondering where, 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 the, where I, we weren't needing any power. Okay, uh, that didn't last very long on, on the, uh, before it overheated. So we said at 50%, just let it cool down. We're obviously going to need some cooling on this. So there we go again. It's, it's like... So the ramp up, we've got this going to its maximum speed as quickly as possible. But we do want this on high. We want this up near the 100%. But it's not going to get anywhere near that. We are going to need some cooling on this. So let's get some radiators running on this. Uh, we'll do the same as we did on the, the same sort of design we had on the other one, so we can. It's easy to count. We've got four cylinders, four radiators. At sixty percent, okay. Let's push it up. That's going up. Let's put another row of radiators in. Oh, that's going up. Let's we'll push the. We want to get this to 90% really. It's going up in temperature. Let's put another row of radiators in. Oh, that's, that's actually not bad. Let's put it up to the full 100%. Let's see what it takes to get this to run this at 100. All right, temperatures going... Oh, it's actually stable. All right, we'll put one more in. Let's see if we can get it down to near that 60. Sixty-nine. Let's put another row in. That's coming down quite nicely, considering we're running at full throttle here. Yeah, let's put another one in. So what are we up to here? One, two, six to one. Six to one on the cooling. And that's got us below the 60%, which has pushed the power output up quite nicely to that 1786, which is excellent. But as I say, considering the amount of turbos we've got in here, maybe the inline turbos or the turbo effect might need a little bit of work um, to see why... I know it's, it's per cylinder, um, but yeah, this design at the moment is a better design at this time. Uh, if we just put this back up to a hundred, put this on a hundred percent and see what it requires. So we'll pa we had uh, one to one on the cooling. And we're producing more more power, actual power. And the efficiency is about the same. So this one is still a, a, a good basic design. Okay, but what where this could be good? I, I, if they do upgrade the turbos, this sort of design I'm hoping would be a better overall design for um, turbos. But yeah, it's holding it. But you can see how much cooling is required for this. Okay, two more designs left, which is um, interesting. Now this is a. Um, one I'd worked on, it's a inclined V6, I think it is. So, so V4. So this is a V4 design. 
Uh, it's actually got getting uh, sorry V6 design, so it's a it's an incline V6. So uh, you can see the engine design there uh, with the two cylinders coming out on just one side, uh, and then we've got turbochargers um, on each of the cylinders and an inline turbocharger and superchargers, all on one side. So you could um, it's possible to make this into a uh, prefab as well, just with a slight change um, to a couple of the t uh, exhausts here, and then you just need to join up the end. So theoretically, that's possible. Um, it's doing a more power for this. This is a a compact. It's quite a compact design for its power, and efficiency-wise. Yeah, we're getting 500 per cylinder because it has got six cylinders. Now, these figures are obviously higher, but you've got to divide it into the values. So, a high power usage, as an example, and this one. Um, well, let me just get make sure I get that. That's V6, that's this one is. Uh, this one is 101 at the high use. So, eh, it's better than the rotary, but not as good as the other two at high. Uh, medium's 136, so it's better than the boxer uh, and the rotary at medium, and low is 181, uh, which is very good. So uh, this is a good low-medium sort of level of engine. You wouldn't be wanting to run this at maximum for too long, uh, in my view. Right, we'll just see, run it at max. Oh, actually, you can see straight away the engines are, are, are sorry, every reason started off at a, a ridiculously high level. Um, hmm, that's an interesting uh, issue. Ah, we've actually run out of fuel. Let me just sort that out for a second. Back in a second. Okay, back again. It showed how much fuel these uh, engines use. We'd run out of the uh, 28,000 fuel, and I've had to get some from... Uh, so it's now delivering from the uh, resource zone now. But uh, even in this short little bit of time, we'd used a lot of fuel. So, okay, let's push this up. So it shows how possibly we need to look at efficiency on these levels. Right, we've got the one, I think we're going to need another set of radiators on here, so we're going up to two per cylinder. Now we did say this is good at low to medium, so really we only want this, ideally we don't want this going too high. Uh, too high and it's okay, but you know, you'd really want this around the maybe, let's say, 85% and then get the hit temperature down there. Let's put 4 to 1. Let's see what temperature that gets down to. Oh, we're down. We've got the temperature down quite it's down to the 60%. That's not too bad. A little high. I think I'd must be want to go a little bit more on that temperature. Sorry, on the radiators. So anyway, it's it's not too bad. I think that's a good medium engine. Uh, it's a little interesting design, showing what you can do with a little um, idea of a little V type of. Uh, configuration but still quite a lot of radiators you can still see actually this really basic engine design does really well all co all things considered so as far as size goes um, power not needing much cooling it's a good basic design uh, nothing wrong with it although if they do increase the turbo efficiency I think at higher levels it will start to change um, and that design at the moment um, I don't see a reason to go for anything except this which is a bit disappointing as such right we'll cut that down there uh, now final design I came up with was how much power now we talked about in the previous one that carburetors gave you a hundred and injectors gave you two hundred so 
what if you generally just use injectors? So this is a rotary design with injectors on every side. So we've got, uh, where possible, it's sharing it. So we've got 16 ejectors here, injectors. So um, we haven't actually got 16, but uh, some of them are shared. So each cylinder has four injectors. So that's 3,200, that's 800 um, power per cylinder. It then has, and that's in a, um, a three size area. And obviously, yes, you could just keep on increasing this forward uh, as a prefab. Uh, very easily, actually, on just repeat um, this three block and keep on repeating it and it would uh, move forward quite nicely in this design. As I say, just a little bit of work on the exhausts. Not necessary to have this on the exhaust. As long as you have one exhaust port there, it will work. But if you wanted to make it neat, you just need to join up this top one on each of the systems because the exhaust goes all the way around the bottom, round to the top, and it joins all the way along the top. So you could do that. But... As far as this has got uh, power and effectiveness goes, uh, if we look at our chart here, now it is straight, now because it's, it's a fairly straight line, but fuel efficiency at 100% is only 75 to 1. That's the worst of everything we've done here. That's um, very bad fuel efficiency at high levels. Uh, Worse than the single and the rotary, obviously, uh, if we go back to the, the most efficient we've had is a, it was the Boxer at 113, and this is 75. So, yes, um, very bad fuel efficiency. Uh, medium is 90. Again, not great at, at the um, medium level. Again, worse of everything, and the, the fuel efficiency at low is 108. So, you don't want this engine turned on unless you really want to. Um, but it's going to give good power for its size. So we want this running at 100% straight away. But this is going to overheat in no time at all. Now I've set this up to, to ramp up very slowly. Yep, that, that didn't like that, as we could imagine. I don't think it, We'll let that cool down again, and we'll put some cooling on. So we'll see how much we need per cylinder. Right, we'll start with one... Uh, meter per cylinder. I'm expecting this will need a lot of cooling. Yeah, we don't need more than that. more again before we put that up so i was just changing the settings there uh let's get this up to 70 percent 80 percent now that's done it overheat let's put some more in now still going over I want to get that down to 60. Still not know, nowhere near 60. We're not even at full power yet. Now we're heading that way now, but... I want to be running this at maximum power, and I just don't think we're going to get it. Alright, let's just, let's just really overload that. Still not got it, still cutting out. Is that still doing it? That's it's 
not efficient and I think that's still going to cut out at that and this is an engine you'd be wanting to run at maximum power and efficiency and you can see how much cooling it's requiring we're only just starting to go down and what are we at here one two Fifteen, fifteen to one cooling. So it just shows how much. Although that's a nice compact engine, etc. Um, really good. Running this at a full power, just not worth it. I mean, look at the amount of cooling you're going to require. So everything you've saved on this engine, you would need to to put into um, cooling. Uh, Right, that's 20 to 1. And we're still at 78%, so we're still not really cooling this uh, very efficiently. Because uh, we've only got four, we've got, yeah, 18 meters square, we've only got four cylinders. Um, yeah, obviously, yes, I could run this at a lower setting. So um, if I allow for the 2000 that I'm aiming to try and get from this. If we running at 80%. Uh, we're getting 2,800. So I could run this at a lower percentage. There we go. And now we're at about 3,000. Somewhere around that, 71. Okay, so we could run it at lower, but that's still a lot of cooling required to get that uh, amount of power out of it. At the moment we're getting 2,100 out of this. Uh, the other ones we we're getting, uh, well, if I get to the 1,800 that the others were producing. Current usage it's doing 1900 is actually that's cutting this down helps a lot although we've still got a lot of thing I need to take some of these off of right let's turn it down to 15 to 1 let's see if that will still produce the 1800 we require yeah about 1800 still a lot of cooling required for a small engine just to get the 1800 power we're after so that's giving out the 1800 uh, we'll just confirm do the same on this one as an example let's say we're after 1800 power I try this this yeah we'll just, we'll just do the same on here so it's all nice and um, sort of roughly even so as long as it's giving out 1800, which it is at the moment, uh, how much cooling have we got there? Yeah, st we'll, we'll stick with that cooling. After 1800 output, so. There we go. That's close enough at the moment. Um, so here's the advantage of these slightly more powerful engines. We can run them specifically at a lower percentage. So this is 65, which means it's actually going to be running nearer to its 11.6 level, which is 136 to 1. If we're after 1800, and you can st still increase it. So for the same space area, um, this one here, if we're after the 1800, we have to run this at 100% and also cool it down quite a lot. Um, anyway, 
I, I think I'm, I'm going too far in some testing areas here. Um, <laughs> more than I need to uh, in this particular case. So this one still is producing the, the 1900 because it's running at 100%, um, but not as efficient as it could be as, say, this one running at a lower percentage. So that's the advantages of these higher powered engines is you can ro run them at a lower maximum percentage rather than trying to run them at a hundred percent like this one is. Uh, okay, um, I'll hopefully that's some ideas of some just some designs of engine. Um, I'm sure people will come out with better small engines and some I don't think there is an, at the moment an ultimately a good design, but I mean to be honest this one here works um, You you can very simply build an engine and this is the primary bit. I want to get over With this new update you haven't got to go to some really complex design like we have here you could just build a few simple engines, maybe not totally 100%, uh, certainly not as efficient, but would still be adequate. Going to one of these other sort of designs would benefit you a little bit, but not majorly. You, you can get away with one of these less efficient engines in your larger ships, uh, just cram it full. The other bit that I'm seeing here is A, uh, cooling is very, very important, um, as, you've, as you've seen. The, um, so, although you might have an efficient engine in this area, you really need to sort out your cooling mechanisms as well. Otherwise, it'll nowhere near produce the uh, maximum power it's you know the engine actually states you know this one here is rated at 2000 but we have difficulty getting you know 18 1900 out of it so uh, don't believe this figure here that's at zero temperature you'll never keep it at zero so um, uh, it, it, you're always going to have a higher temp the other bit is it's better to run engines a lot uh, you know a, a higher hmm, it's somewhere I'm, I'm just trying, I'm just saying something which I don't know if it's a hundred percent correct, but it seems like it's more efficient to build a reasonably powerful engine like this 3000 power unit and run it at a lower percentage. That is more efficient fuel wise, I believe, than running a engine at a hundred percent if you're after a particular temperature and the advantage of the big engine is that it can go to idle and in this type of environment be using very little fuel at its idle type of uh, range so uh, yeah as with a lot of things in from the depths build it big uh, <laughs> You can get away with, you do not need to build one big engine. You could, once you've got a design like this, just duplicate it, the whole engine. Uh, because the way the system works with its each individual cylinder, there's no real advantage. If this was split into two fives, it would still produce the same uh, maximum output compared to having a single 10 cylinder engine. So uh, that's good for in a couple of areas. One is that um, you haven't got all of your power requirements in one engine. If it gets damaged, then you lose all power. You can have multiple engines around the ship and you can have some of the engines set to only react I set up the ramp up times and the responsiveness so they only react when the other engine doesn't give enough power. So you can have some engines which are just literally idling, waiting for a power requirement. Um, and you do that with setting up these ramp up times and the responsiveness. 
Uh, so making some engines on permanently. So this one, as an example, uh, could be on permanently. And this one we could have set only to respond when it needs the additional power. I'll set this about 80% so it doesn't. So you set the responsiveness very low. Uh, the decay very fast and the ramp up time very fast. Now it looks like we're using a bit too much power. Let's take out one of these here. Uh, take that one out. So this one is now running most of the time. Just generating a bit more unstable power. There we go. So you can see as there's a higher demand, this one is slowly coming online. That might be a little too slow, so we can just increase and get this, but it's not on all the time. The other one is on most of the time. go for about there and this one just comes on when the, the, it is power required and that's you, you can work on this the ramp up times decays responsiveness uh, they can all allow you to stage your engines which ones are on permanently like this one because it's the most efficient and then this one only comes on when there's a there's a specific need I'll try to um, possibly look at that as an extra video. Okay, I think I'll call it there. <laughs> Some interesting designs. Any comments, please leave them below. I did ramble on a bit here, but then again, don't I always? Uh, <laughs> this is very exciting. It's a whole new design area. We can have fun. There's, I'm sure there's going to be people coming up with some other weird designs, including some... I did come up with a, mm, what should we say, sort of a V, a, an eight-cylinder using the extenders, an eight-cylinder design in a single row, like a rotary eight-cylinder, uh, but it wasn't that effective really. Um, hopefully, there'll be some tweaking, but nothing too different from what we have here. I hope I have got everything right here. If I've missed something, or if you think, no, I am totally wrong on something there, please leave the comment below, um, and we, I can have a look at it and see what um, I've mucked up, because I do muck things up. It's always um, the case in this. As always, click that like button, and until next time, have fun. <laughs>